Traditionally, the spouses of political leaders have always been relegated to one corner and told that you should only appear when there's a ceremony and appear and say nothing and appear and do nothing. Now we are living in a world where that cannot work anymore. We have to go in the right direction and the right direction is to work with our partners, to work with the family so that we can also remove this veil that that is a space that is preserved only for show. Tessie has stood next to me in times of victory and also in times of loss or defeat. But she has held out firmly, stood firm, and said, at least you are not dead. There will be another day. And this is what has kept us going. So, she has been active in uh, a lot of charity work. She has championed a lot about medical programs. She'll speak for herself on some of them. She has been involved in a lot of charitable work. She has paid medical expenses for many, many people, especially cancer victims, whether it is at Kenyatta Hospital or elsewhere. I know she has been at it. Sometimes I've even asked her, where are you getting the money? And she says, my initiative and my talks to other people is enabling me to do that. What does it cost? Let us talk of CBC. Let us talk of uh, the cost of education. Those of us who are seated here, how much do you think it costs to produce one textbook of Braille? Personally, I don't know. But it is in the thousands to produce a textbook of Braille. What can we do as a community to make sure that we can make Braille textbooks affordable for more and more young children in our country? So there are things that are literally under our nose, but we take them for granted. And today, Tessie, you're stepping forward so that you can be able to share with us and jolt our minds so that we can work together. We have lost a lot of time and sometimes we lose a lot of time dwelling on issues that are actually non-issues. Dwelling on issues that are actually non-issues. Yet the very substance of what makes us human is passing us by. So let us stand out, let us come forward as a society, as people, so that we can pull together and work. And personally, Tessie, I'm very proud that you're stepping out and coming out forcefully so that you can, in your own way, complement other efforts, not necessarily mine, but other efforts by other Kenyans in helping and supporting our society. I had never been to Brazil before. I was there sent by the president.
to attend the inauguration of uh, um, the swearing in of the president there, Lula. And one of the things I noticed was that as you enter, as you, as you walk through the airport, all along, I noticed there was some strange path and I was wondering who was designing this. It can trip people and all that. But then I realized it was the footpath or the, the path for the blind. So in every aspect of the airport, there is actually a path and the blind people are taught that if you walk there, you know where you're going all along, including eventually into the lifts, where the lift, there is braille. So if it is the sixth floor, the blind person knows that this is the sixth floor, and they're there. And I started asking myself, how many of our buildings, our malls, our shopping centers, have we even thought about uh, this kind of thing? We have tended to relegate the issue of disability to a ramp, in a building, that all you need is a ramp and you assume that it is disability compliant. Is that true? There's a lot more to be done. I really look forward to the day that I will go and vote and simply go back to my work of the day. There are some countries even if it is a general election, you'll not know that there's a general election. They vote and they continue with their activities. We pray and hope that that will happen here one day, that we can vote, finish, then go back to the business of working for the Kenyan people and not live in a cycle of electoral captivity all the time.